Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we are going to discuss how to fix a stripped thread in your frame for your sway bars on old school cars like muscle cars, C10 trucks, whatever you name it. Wherever they decided to thread or tap right into that thin material, that's how thick that it's a 1 8 inch thick material to hold in those flimsy sway bars. That's fine, but now that we've upgraded everything, chassis braces, bigger sway bars. I actually stripped one of these threads. So now I got to figure out how to fix it. If, if it's your first time here, welcome. I do all this work in my home garage and this is my first time trying this. So you're going to learn from my mistakes. That's the whole premise of this channel. So subscribe if you haven't. And next step here, we selected because we did a ton of destructive testing in our last episode to figure out what the torque ratings are for each size, we selected a 3 8 16 uh, nut rivet. So we need to continue our testing because since I've not done it before, I'm bench testing our theory first and then we're going to implement it in the car. So stay tuned, a lot to learn to do. Let's go hit the bench. So a quick recap, if you missed last episode, we did some destructive testing. We wanted to figure out what thread sizes hold how many foot pounds and to start things off, the original bolt size is 5 16 18, where 12 foot pounds pass. So if you're curious what your spec should be, I wouldn't exceed 10. I would just use 10 or call it 120 inch pounds uh, on a standard bolt. Now, if you uh, mess up those bolts, you can go to 3 8 16, but do not think that that's a higher load. Again, stick with 10, 10 foot pounds. But since we're maximizing our suspension, I want to increase that and we proved that we could get up to 50 pounds. Now I wouldn't do this in the car, I would actually do 40 or maybe 35, we'll talk about that later if we're successful with our next test. But we proved that if we have direct loading on this top flange, we can get 50 pounds. If we do not have direct loading, 35 fails, so 30 pounds non-direct and that means you have contact you're bolting direct onto that surface or is the load going into the plate versus the flange okay so i went ahead and pulled some dimensions this mimics what's in the frame right now and we'll go ahead and put this in the vise and do some more testing and mimic just like we're doing it in the car okay those of you at home that are pondering going to 3 8 inch bolts make sure they fit in your brackets before you make this decision Oh, obviously you can open up those holes in the brackets if you want, but this clearly lines up just like it does in the car. Now, last video, we discussed the dimensions of these rivet nuts and they require quite a, a large size hole to be drilled and the instructions were wrong, right? So I had to order a special drill bit and I'll leave part numbers all below, but this is a 1732nd uh, drill bit and I'm gonna use it in my hand drill because just like in the car, we can't access this with a drill press in the car. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna use my hand drill. We're gonna drill these holes out, put these um, nut certs in. I'll show you the tool we're working with um, in a minute and uh, we'll get to the next step. Yes, one done, two done. So again, like we're in the car, we need to deburr this hole because we want a nice flush fit of that rivet. And there's burrs on both sides. I can feel them, but you can get this tool. Again, part numbers are below. I got this on Amazon. It has a really cool, uh, I don't know what you call this, deburr so you can do this top hole like this. Very handy, but the hidden burr so for the back side of the hole, since we can't access that, it's got the swivel burr tool. So you actually just go around, you go around the edge and it cleans off that burr. How cool is that? Here's the kit I got from Amazon. I'll, again, the part numbers are below. Comes with a whole bunch of sizes, metric and SAE. SAE sizes start at half inch, 13. They go all the way down to 1024. There's three empty bins here, 1032, 832, and it looks like 632 they're empty because you have to buy an extra kit if you want those which i did because i have a feeling this tool is going to come in handy around the house and on the car now what we decided to do was use the 3 8 
inch size bolt, which requires a drill bit of certain size. What I recommend is double check the math here because this chart says drill size and we proved one of them was wrong. So take the OD with your calipers, find the next closest drill bit size that's already available, which what we already did, and we're ready to go. Now, the one risk I don't know about yet is how do we use this vertical tool in the car do we have to jack up the car i don't know we're going to figure that out and maybe there's something on the market that's more of a 90 degree but uh, so far this has been working good so let's go ahead and put these in our new plate ah yes two done all right test fit a couple things i'm noticing already so depending on your bolt width will determine if you can fit a washer in there. See how the washer doesn't sit flush? That's because it's hitting this upright of the bracket. So I will probably hit the hit it with a belt, um, my flap disc grinder, and just make a little flat on the side of those two washers to make sure they can sit flat. But the other thing that concerns me is this gap between the bracket and the plate. Here's why there's a problem. Do you see the elevation change, that flange? Oh man, okay, so I need to do some thinking here. I would much prefer this all be level for our bracket. Let's see. 32 thousandths. Hmm, you guys are not gonna believe this. You know what's close to 32 thousandths? A 1 32nd alignment shim. Look at that. Oh, but it almost fits. You gotta be kidding. All right, for this test, that's what we're gonna do. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can't even move it. That's brilliant. Okay, that's one challenge. So maybe I can hunt something online um, to make a better shape for the car, but that's a good starting point for our test. My other concern that we discussed last video is this exposed flange, right? So if we're going to be bolting this down, the load is going through the bracket into that flange underneath the bracket. But will it pull that up, which is the failure mode of the, um, the units we tested where we didn't direct load it on the flange, which is a good question. Um, hmm. This is why it's troubling. Here's the UMI brace that goes underneath the um, sway bar brace. See how exposed that flange is? That's why I'm not comfortable with just putting it on there. If you're just doing direct um, sway bar, I think it'd be fine, frankly. But I don't like this exposed area, so we got to come up with another little solution here. Okay, I think I got it. We should make an adapter plate like that, so it's like a sandwich. We'll make holes that are slightly larger, like the ID of this inside, this counter bore in here. So that'll give us some room to move the plate back and forth. Because if you're not perfectly centered with a 3 8 inch hole, you won't be able to get one of the bolts in. So we want to be a little bit larger, but still have surface area to cover that flange. So, uh, hmm. You guys remember this trick from third grade? Now I can transfer that whole center to my piece of metal. And we can also do this in the car later when we want to uh, mimic our correct bolt um, distance. Let's take our center punch. Bingo, bango. I found a drill bit that is just about that size. If you're gonna wanna know, this is a 7 sixteenths. All right, so I'm gonna start with a smaller hole in the other plate before you go to a, a big drill bit so you can prevent those oblong holes from happening. So I'll start with a quarter inch and then use this. Shims, 
intermediate plate sits perfectly on that flange OD. I took some off the washer. I actually used the lock washer as the thickness guide. Let's put everything on here. Make sure you can get a socket on both sides before you go to tighten it down. Okay, here comes the test. We failed at 35 pounds on the exposed flange test. So if we can get to 40 pounds here, we are in business. Okay, here we go, getting close. Come on. Yes, I was a little scared there. Let's do the other one. Yes! Let's see how it looks. Oh yeah, don't you just love our new sandwich? Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing and put that brace underneath. There we go, team. I like it, I like it. Now I gotta think about what to do about the shim issue because that's gonna be kind of hard to do in the car, especially when you're upside down. I'll figure something out. So let me noodle that, be right back. All right, did some Googling. Look what I found, aluminum sheet. That's 32 thousandths thick. Yes. Now I'm gonna cut one out, trace my bracket on here. Use that template we'd made already. Center punch, nice. And I'll use my tin snips to cut it out. Put some eighth inch holes for pilot holes and try that. Try my Christmas tree bit, see if that'll cut some bigger holes to get larger than the flange on the rivet nut. How cool is that? And then you just flip it over and deburr this side. Whoop! Sweet! Let's see, let's see. Oh, hell yes. Perfect. Look at that. Now let's get under the car and talk strategy there. Get to drilling. I'm going to try and stay 90 degrees with this level surface. And I'm creeping up on it. This is not the final OD we need. Two. Okay, here's the final size. See how easy that is when you creep up on it? Play with our new deburring tools. Don't forget the inside. And luckily this hole's big enough you can actually kind of feel in there. Well, if you have small pinkies like me. Or get your wife to do it. So I was trying to do this whole project without taking the sway bar off. So let's see how it's still attached to the control arm. And of course, I, based the way my lift is set up, I can't put the tool in and it hits the sway bar. So I'm gonna put the other bracket up on the passenger side. Then I can put these in just fine, just like that. There goes nothing. Usually takes a couple times, so you release the handle, tighten it up again. Ah, do it as hard as you can until it stops. Oh yeah, awesome. All right, let's get that second one in without blowing up my shoulder. Yes. Let me get this bar down so we have more visibility. Let's see if my original aluminum plate works. I was actually a little worried about this edge of the frame and which means we probably have to trim that other uh, backing plate we made to fit within that that space. But at least this thing is done and I could probably um, make a duplicate of it. I'll trace a duplicate of it before I mount it so we can use it on the other side. So here's the backing plate we used on the vise. It actually fits pretty good, except for that one edge of the frame. Most likely just match the bracket, right? 
I think that's the easiest solution, even with the corners and everything, so you can't see it. Uh, you won't see it anyway because I have the UMI brace, but if you don't have a UMI brace, then it'll look just nice and clean. So I'll do that and uh, mount it up. Not, yes, I will paint this before final install, but we're just mocking it up. Okay, test fit. I'm not going to lie, this was kind of not easy to do because I was trying to line up that the aluminum shim, the steel plate, which I have not painted yet. Thank you very much. And uh, this bolt, I think, is angled back more, so they weren't perfect. The bolts weren't perfectly parallel, so I had to get my uh, spreader tool or clamp, whatever, and squeeze the sway bar towards the rear to get this bolt in. So just warning you guys, it's a tight fit. So I think what I'm going to do after I paint the bracket, the aluminum shim, I'm going to glue to the frame. That way I'm okay with its position, etc. So, but so far this is looking really good. I still have to test fit the uh, UMI brace and we'll go from there. Of course, it's never easy, folks. Uh, so here's the um, driver's side of the UMI brace. We have a little problem with clearance there. Let me show you the other side. This is why it works fine in the vise because this is a different slot and that's for installation reasons. It is a brilliant idea, but obviously the slot's different now because we have wider bolts. Let's go back to the other side. So to make this fit, we got to remove some material here. So I'm going to go ahead and take that amount out. Thank God we have that new backing plate, right? And to do so, I'll just use my burr tool, my die grinder, carve that out. Oh, I'll try this again. There we go. Clean shot to our th new threaded hole. Oh my gosh. I found something else too on the brackets. Let me show you something. Yep, painted the brackets. I used POR15, my favorite rust preventative paint. Uh, so here's the thing I found on the brackets. Now keep in mind, our original bolts are 5 16ths. There are lots uh, narrower, so it gives you room to move your bracket. Now with the 3 8 inch bolt, we have less room to move. And what I discovered is based on my sway bar, it's not the bends were not perfectly, uh, say, 90 degree to the frame. So I have to pivot. I'm exaggerating, but I have to pivot the brackets like that, right? So I had to take some material off of here and off of this side. Same on this side. Took some off of this and this side. So that way I was able to twist the brackets because the sway bar, again, is not perfectly straight. So it depends on your sway bar, of course. But that's the modification I had to do the bracket to get our thicker bolt to fit in. So that might help you out if you don't even need the backing plates and you're just doing raw bracket to frame with 3 8 inch bolts, you might need to do that. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue in those aluminum plates to the frame. And while that's drying, I'm also going to paint where I carved out that hole in the UMI brace. All right, I got my shims glued in. They're actually cemented in. I use this stuff called E6000. I've never used it before. It seems to be working great. I actually put um, bolted it in overnight so it is nice and flush. I love it. Next step, let's get this whole thing put back in and we'll wrap it up with what torque values I ended up using. There she is, boys and girls. We got our shim. We got our backing plate, so, so to speak. We have our UMI brace. And then I double washered the washer underneath the lock washer and torqued this to 25 pounds. Let me explain that. Okay, when you bolt your system back together, make sure the full su suspension is fully loaded. You want the correct preload of the suspension before you tighten everything together. That's the way you do it. Now, I mentioned 25 foot pounds. How did I come up with that number, you say? Well, because we tested a 50, remember that? The reason is I like to use a safety factor of two. So 50 divided by two is 25 because if you were to line up a hundred of these nuts and test full torque ability, I'd be willing to bet 25% of them or 20% of them fail because we're testing to the upper threshold of that nut rivet or thread insert or whatever you want to call these things. So safety factor of two, we settled on 25 foot pounds. 
Now, if we're talking about the five, uh, 3 8 inch or the 5 16 directly tapped into the frame, I did say earlier that uh, to use 10 foot pounds, I'm retracing that comment or retracting it, I should say, because our max was 12 foot pounds. Half of that is six. So six foot pounds, what you should be using are 72 inch pounds. So six foot pounds compared to 25, we now have four times this holding strength of these fasteners. And when you start upgrading your chassis stiffening braces and bigger sway bars, uh, I, I want some reassurance that those fasteners are going to hold and do it, their intended job. So I learned a lot this episode. I thought I hope you guys did too. Next episode, quarantine cruise. Yes, sir. Another one coming up. I love those cruises because they give me a ton of ideas for future projects on the GOAT or uh, other projects that might come into the garage. I don't know yet. But if you guys do not get inspired by the quarantine cruise, pick up a new hobby. Seriously. <laughs> it's some crazy, crazy car builds at those shows. And if they don't inspire you, you need to pick up tennis or golf. Yeah, just be serious with yourself. So until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.